Okay, so we're uh, we're here this morning. We have a special guest, someone who's just started using the alpha indicators, the daily cycle markers, and the Orion signals. And I wanted to go over this in relation to a market that he's watching. Um, the Australian US dollar forex pair and give you some sense of how the indicator works and get a bead on what we can potentially potentially expect in this uh, instrument over the coming days both of the software uh, packages have a predictive element in the upper right hand corner of the screen so these are the daily cycle marker tool and Orion tool respectively from the alpha package and they provide a leading non-changing text and message in the upper right hand corner that notifies us when the next signal is coming and so you'll see that in seven days we have another selling pressure signal coming in the Australian dollar and in just four days we have another phase three one of these small red dots uh, coming to print on the close of that bar when we get to that point so where we are right now on both the Orion and the daily cycle marker chart involves a buying pressure phase so we're going to look at what those buying pressure phases have produced in each of the studies using the Australian price action so I'm going to stretch it out and actually add a little bit more data if I can instead of 300 we'll do let's do 450 days this will give us a little over a year's worth of signals to look at okay matter of fact let's do a little bit more I want to go a little bit further past that let's just go straight out 800 days there we go okay so that really drives home what we're what we're looking with here this is the block of time that we're studying basically we're in the July August uh, September area we were here July August September uh, prior year and if we add a little bit more data we'll see where we were three years ago July August September so we sort of have that three month chunk right here we have this three month chunk right here and now we have this three month chunk right here okay so one of the first things I'd like to point out that I see right away is um, a pattern that's showing up on this chart has anyone seen it so far let me see if I can help you see it in the two prior years we have what appears to be a pronounced I guess you'd call it a wave pattern let me see if I can use that here Earl check it out we have this push up then we have a second push like there all right sort of these two waves to a top good morning Ron Isa can you see that 
And then notice when we go back to 2016, ESA, we have this wave and then this wave, right? In that same period of time. And that ends up becoming a topping pattern. It ends up becoming a topping pattern. Okay. Well, there's this wonderful phenomenon in time cycles. You'll see it uh, all the time, where many times we arrive at a buying pressure time and the market reverses in the appropriate direction. And then many times ESA, here's our buying pressure time and we'll arrive at that buying pressure time in the opposite direction where normally we would expect a pullback into that time we are arriving at an extension at higher prices by that time and we call this an inversion because the expectation is a reversal out of the area you would know it from the histogram guidebooks as a pattern five. So, in the case of this pattern, let's call it the the summer pat the summer Aussie pattern. If we're normally seeing this, and then we arrive, and Issa, we see this pattern. Can you see how the two things are mirror opposites of each other? Let's actually do it this way. If you have a pattern that's doing this, and we put a mirror under it, and Earl, it's tending to do that instead. The odds are, if the time patterns are consistent, that we're looking at an inversion of the original pattern, that original summer pattern. So if we fast forward over to the right hand side of the chart, you'll see that in this case, we sort of have that hockey stick pattern right here and it's almost a complete opposite of this original pattern right here. It's a reflection in the water, so to speak. So when you look at all three of those in totality, you have historically a summer push, historically a summer push, and now this time they're reverting in the opposite direction with the same zigzag ABC pattern that they exhibited in these two iterations. As a matter of fact, just out of curiosity, if we go back more days, I wonder what we see in the prior June-July cycle. Yeah, there we go. So Issa, check this out. You see this one here? June, July, August, September. So we have four examples of the same period of time. There's our hockey stick pattern right there, which becomes a bottom of sorts, right? So the question then becomes, where does that pivot usually occur? And where is this thing headed next, if that's the case? This was May 15th. This was January 31st. That's April. So let's take a look at it this way. I'm going to move this back to May, and there's 
a red dot right here. Over here in the current down move, that move started back up over here in June. Okay, so we have June currently, and back over here we have May 15th. So they're within two weeks of the drop. So in 2015, we came down into, we're August 1st today. So August 1st, we're in this area right here, Isa. Let's go ahead and move this over to August 1st. And then we'll come into the bottom, which appears middle the beginning of September. So in those in those instances, it looks like there was a pattern a selling pattern here, a selling pattern here, a selling pattern here. This one is off by one day. It's actually a pattern four, which means we expect to pull back to the dot and then a drop and then a selling pattern here. So there's a total of one, two, three, four, five drops down from the high. And when we got into August 1st, this area here we had a pattern that looks like this a consolidation pattern, a drop down, a pull back into that pattern and then a further retracement. So let's come over and look at the current version of that. This was a pattern 5 a green dot and then the candle to the right of it was a higher high. So I'm going to move my line here. So we've had one push down. We've had the next red dot. We've had our second push down right here, Isa. And this candle was our third one. So let's go ahead and mark that on the Australian dollar. That's our third push. Let's see where the third push was in 2015. One, two, three. The third push was July 6th in 2015. Okay, so again, we're looking for evidence of this kind of consolidation phase here, and it doesn't begin its drop, it looks like, until August, middle of August. And now, Isa, we see, okay, so the third push is there, the third push is here, and we're seeing a lot of the same attributes, right? The fourth push is coming in seven days. So let me do this. I'm going to come and drag it back one more time. I'm going to take a screenshot of this so I don't have to keep looking. Back in the past. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so I've got this here. And now here's the current one. How's this sound so far, Earl? Am I on a good path or am I completely off the rails right now? One two, three, there's a few ways of looking at it. 
So right here, you have this drop, and then this accumulation phase right there, and then the drop. There were one, two, three touches of this bottom. So over here currently, Isa, look at this pattern. In the AUD USD. We have that pullback here. And it looks like they're offset. It looks like this candle here, let's call this A. Again, I don't think banks do anything randomly. I think they just follow the same plays all over again. It looks like that red dot is this red dot right here. Let me see if I can change the font so it looks a little better. So it looks like this A is this A. It looks like this is, let's call that B. It looks like this one is the B. This is C right here. That little green dot which means this one is C right here. Okay, you see how those things line up, Earl? They're actually positioned really nicely because A appears towards the top in both of these. B is near the bottom on both of these. And here's what's really I, f I find it fascinating. C is kind of in the middle of the whole mishpuka here. Back in 2015. And on this one, C is in the middle back in 2015. Which means, if this follows the pattern three years ago, seven days from now, there's a likelihood that we're going to see, it looks like, a third touch of the low, a lower touch, Isa. A stop run here which should put us below on my chart 7311 and then there'll be a surge for a couple days back up into here and then it looks like one of these a retest of the low followed by a puncture. So seven days from now, it looks like we're down below the lows. And then if the pattern is identical, we're going to, we'll be down, it looks like 50% of this distance below 
here and then it looks like price action if it follows the same way is sort of down here until the next green dot which is 20 days from now so it looks like 20 days from now we're down over here somewhere again if these two patterns are locked in phase the way they're expected to be if they continue to follow that pattern so that's what I would be looking for the things to be very careful about with the Aussie dollar are a reattack of this low and a stop run here so when we come back down into that low expect a third push there was a push here there was a push here a third retouch a third retouch a pullback and then the drop so they want people to think that this area here is full of hope that we're going to head back up so we're in a bullish area right now we're on a lower time frame as we get closer and closer to that low you'll see opportunities for counter trend longs when we come back and approach it a fourth time that's when you need to be watching for selling positions I'm pretty sure anyway the um, yeah the Aussie dollar coming down into September though that's when we start to see halfway between these two dates so that would be 36 days from now we're looking at about 42 days a reversal in the Australian dollar potentially 42 days from now I think we'll see how it goes all right let me stop the recording if you have any questions let me know post in the comments below